uh, a stronghold of government support with uh, the, 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 the question of who started it and whether they're right or wrong is not really going to take us anywhere forward at this stage. Seymour Gosto, what can the UN do now? You've Kofi Annan has pretty much done everything he can. Can the UN do anything more? Well, what can the UN do now? You Kofi Annan has pretty much done everything he can. Is there are there any other options available? Well, no, not for the UN as an organization, but as for the membership, I don't know what they are doing except talking. I think Kofi Annan, who knows the situation quite well, he has very good staff who are very experienced in this region also. I think that, and they have a good credibility in, uh, in Syria, and I believe with both sides. Uh, yes, they, there are a lot of things they can do, and I do also believe, I agree with their spokesman on the economy, that there has been a perceptible decrease in level of violence. It's not ended, but there has been a decrease. I agree with them. This is a very slow process. You have 24, 30 observers on the ground. You have to spread this to younger people to all the conflict points, flash points in the country. This takes time because they are not there. So, I mean, once you have this UN presence on the ground, I'm sure we are going to see a considerable reduction in level of violence and of, of, um, of the suffering of the people. But again, as I said, it's not going to end the problem. It's not these people on the ground who are going to solve this crisis. Somebody, someplace else, they should start working on this. There are other options. There are a lot of uh, other sanctions that the UN can impose. Uh, of course, we need the Russia and China on board on this one. But as I said to you before, is this situation right for a solution? We are asking both sides to give such major concessions that they might not be ready to give at the moment because of the consequences for the opposition to give up their arms and uh, then face the future, the music that they will face unless they are ready to the issue. And then you're asking the state, with the same plan, to give up its sovereignty, its control over certain uh, population areas. These are very heavy concessions. Unless you can take them up with some sort of action, you are not going to get it, I'm afraid. Coming to the end of the show, I'll just give uh, one final word to Issa Shire. What do you think a, a viable end game would look like in this scenario? The Bible and again is to give a uh, dialogue a chance to uh, for all the parties to put their arms down and look at the future of no, no, Syria. No, no, no. Bible and game. I mean, do you, how, mu how much uh, do you think that President Assad is willing to change the existing regime? How much power is he willing to give up in order to achieve peace? Uh, if he would have to, if the aspiration of the, uh, the Syrian people is to have a reform, the reform that is sustainable and for all the political parties to take part in running the country. And I think President Assad is, is now uh, thinking very seriously about the future of Syria, trying to involve every single faction in Syria. I think there is a future for dialogue, there is a future for peace in Syria. And we are well out of time. Thank you very much indeed. Issa Shire joining us there from London, Timur Gokil uh, in Beirut, and also uh, we have Tom Porteous, of Human Rights Watch joining us from the United States. Well, as we mentioned there, the elections in Syria are due to happen on May the 7th. So by the time we join you on this program again next week, there'll be plenty more to talk about. In the meantime, thank you very much indeed for watching. If you want to catch this show again online, just go to our website, aljazeera.com. But for the moment, from me and from the team, Al Jazeera English showcases films from across the Al Jazeera network. We're supposed to be seriously examining history. Last night, I spent uh, several hours reading the paper presented by Dr. Pinkerson, and I found it disturbing. An outspoken critic, an American radical, part of the America close-up season, at this time on Al Jazeera. Think about it, social media is not new. It's just a new term, a new term. We've always done that, communicated with each other, always. Communicating is a basic human need, human need. freedom of expression, a fundamental human right. All that's really changed, changed over the years is the means of distribution, the way we get the messages out. The listening posts cover in all forms of media, old and new, at this time, on out to do. 
Australia's binge drinking culture is destroying lives across the country with a slew of alcohol-related crimes. 101 East asks, will Australia overcome this national hangover? 101 East at this time on Al Jazeera. Sourcing stories from the online community. The stream is powered by social media. There's a tweet here from Abel. The question is, seeking out unheard voices. Providing perspective on issues being discussed at ground level. Participate, interact, join the stream. At this time on Al Jazeera. See the world from every angle and every side. I'm missing it. Books, a celebration of culture, religion, and identity. Caught up in a crossfire of political conflict. We left our houses and everything. The story of how thousands of Palestinian books and documents were seized during the 1948 war.